feel like every show I've been to for so many years, it always looks the same. Like you have your 2D situation with a table and a dude and then a screen and like that's essentially it. I saw I really wanted to make our show like a circus where there's stuff going on kind of everywhere. Even the merch booth is part of the show and on stage making a form factor that just felt new. So it felt really fun to mix theatrical elements in with electronic music, with custom inflatables and just wacky, crazy stuff. I would describe Memba's live show as theatrical, intentional, but it has an energy that is super special and unique. The Inevitable Tour is our first ever headline tour. We really wanted to have a way we could just fully express ourselves. <laughs> For me, the biggest influence for this show was my sister and growing up with death in my face all the time. And that's why it's called Inevitable. This belief that there may be life after death, that's like a really important cornerstone of the story. And then mixing in a masala like Indian culture on top of electronic, it felt like a good balance of all the things that I like personally. We want people to feel all sorts of things, like an array of feeling, be it like aggressive. Yeah, you know, like time where you're just stank facing the whole time and sometimes where you're like absolutely having a moment of sonder and realization that like look this is my life i'm in it you know like moments of presence hopefully you feel a lot of different things and then if you go to the merch booth and you eat nandi you know how you feel <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. The onion challenge is essentially if you face a full onion, you get 50% off whatever, and it is tough. But we're willing to push it as far as health and safety laws let us. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first man to crush a full fucking onion. <laughs> One area where we really want to differentiate our shows and make a place for people to gather and meet other cool people that are at the show is our merch booth. Our first real exploration of it was at our Saga One show. That's where the Onion challenge began. And then another thing that was super successful that we're probably going to do is get a dude painted with a megaphone. And if you yelled something really personal through the megaphone for everybody to hear, you got a free shot that were all custom made after like songs. So it was like the keep it up, like the Zilla. Our merch booth is always gonna be like a wild, a wild place. The universe of member started long ago. If you move freely, if you sweat, a connection will be formed between us and you. <laughs> whole kind of story and what we're trying to convey with the show is if you go hard enough through song, dance, or ritual, you can summon a character from the member universe to the stage in front of you. Character is from the Saga 2 planet. Our EPs are these different places and each one is centered around a different core emotion. Like Saga 1 was like 
filthy, self-indulgent, aggression type of place. And Saga 2 is more like introspective and acceptance of death, which leads them to live very free and in the moment. The Saga 2 characters, if you've seen the movie, at the end of it, those are the characters that get brought out through the show. The show was always built in three acts and always had this voiceover that introduced each act. We made this character evolve throughout the show and have a life of its own that kind of starts in the darkness. It's in a place of need and help. And then throughout each act gets closer and closer to the crowd. It's brighter and brighter, gets just more alive. The lady doing the voice, her name's Chitra Leka Sen. She's this amazing Rajasthani folk singer. I found her on WhatsApp and was like, hey, like, can you help me out? And she's like, sure, sure, but I can't speak English. So I'd be like, inevitable. 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 Silence. Silence. We just got more special and like had the Indian group and like inflection. <laughs> she said when she was recording it, the guy recording her was getting so frustrated because he was just like, what is this? And why are you making me sit here and record what you say this weird stuff? <laughs> this is it. Final act, your mounting energy levels have restored the enchant connection. Let's begin the ceremony. Right before Act 3, I need to pretty much dress up as this character. Once I go on stage and the character is revealed, there's a moment where Sean will pinpoint someone who he thinks has been going the absolute craziest all night. I will present a gift to them. When we have our mop moment, we take a second to reward someone in the crowd that's giving us the maximum pipe. So every show, we kind of picked out the rowdiest person in the crowd and gave them like a reward. That moment is always going to be there because we're so grateful to people and we want them to feel part of the show. And that's a huge, important thing, like underlined it five times. Like we want everyone to feel like they're part of the show. And at the shows, you are free. You are free to be part the fuck you want to be. You are free. I was terrified with so many things to do with the show. I have a feeling that sometimes we have too many ideas. I'm really relieved that a lot of those concerns now are like at peace. So I like feel so much better about it. I couldn't sleep for like a month leading up to the show. It's like, is it too weird? Is it talking too much? You know, just a million voices in the head of panic. I'm so happy because people seem to get it. Well, we drove three hours to see this show yes. and they saw us going so fucking hard in front of the speaker. And they our asses off. Gave us a show. Charlotte. They make us sat <laughs> like this. My workout is still going. This is how many calories I've burned in the last 52 minutes Ooh. from just fucking jumping around. No. I never leave the bar. I came out a minimum of 10 times with both my hands all the way the fuck up. Every single person is doing the exact same thing. Their hands are up and they're like, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. <laughs> It was so much fucking fun, dude. This is one of the most fun events that I think we have ever had here, period. Right, up. The other fear was just um, the Bulus. This is the third version of them, so we've actually dealt with jank here, believe it or not. The Ulu design has been a long process. I mean, when I started, we were always like, oh, it'd be so cool to just bang on the stuff live. The first version of the Ulu was an instrument called Aridiani. I got like a laundry bamboo hamper and put all these plants on it and had six sticks coming out of it. And I put capacitive touch sensors on top of the thing so you could like bang on the top of the wood. So that was version one. Then version two, we were like, let's do this at the show, but let's redesign them. So we made a circular version with four pads on them. And you actually 
slap them to play. The motion was kind of fun, but they'd wheel around, the wires would keep coming undone, and the setup took so long. It was all just a bit too janky, but we really liked how the left-right visualizing rhythm was coming across. So we were like, okay, let's do these, but road ready. This version is night and day better than the rest. It's cool to see the slow, steady progression of this idea. It kind of took a while, and now to finally be ripping on them, like the first show, Getting that first 808 down, like, I'll never forget that. So satisfying. We had the Ulus built in 2018, like this version, version three. Those are like ready to rip. It was January 2020 and Will and I were in rehearsals and we were so optimistic. Here's the headline tour, baby. Like we were in every day, like bagging on these things, getting the like for Aisha VIP ending. Like that was written essentially back in 2018. We had all the drum pilots figured out, all of that. We were so excited. And then next week it's like, yeah, it waits, cancel the world, it's gone to hell. And we were pretty devastated about it. Fast forward three years, a lot of time to rework it. We must have made seven new versions, like rewritten so many parts that, you know. Yeah, the visual was definitely leveled up in 2020. So yeah. that was a blessing. My inspiration for these visuals were taking different parts of every song and kind of creating like a world behind them. I think there's a real story to tell through every single visual from the beginning to the end. There's moments where it's really dark and gritty and grimy and there's moments where it's super bright and hopeful. So giving every song its proper energy and breath was kind of where we decided to take a lot of visuals. Some of my favorite moments in the visuals are it's definitely all right with me. I think that one hits home for me just because it's talking about like be whoever you want to be, it's all right with me. And the idea behind that was just using machine learning to create all these computer generated faces and showing it arrive just like all the different types of spectrum of the people from kids to race to ethnicity to gender and having them cycle back and forth was what I felt when I heard that song. I think another moment that I felt the strongest was Doom for sure. I just wanted to do something super dark and gritty and evil and first thing that came to mind was medieval gothic art, Bosch and Goya, and just trying to pull up as much art history references as I can and kind of mash that all together was the inspiration for Doom. Dreams, we met at a festival and he was a space mad waste man, like absolutely loaded. Pouring drinks on his head, wavy as hell. She was like, hey, like I do visuals. And we were like, cool man, uh, you see blackout right now, you know? <laughs> so we didn't make me a call. We're like, yeah, have a great time. And ended yeah, yeah. thank you for coming set, nice outfit, yeah. And then after that, I found his work through Instagram. He'd done a video for someone else. And I was looking up the credits and I reached out to him. Since then, you know, we started working on all the phases, music videos in that whole era. After rehearsals in Seattle, the guy's like, yo, you should come on tour with us. I was going to come, but like I had so much work. So I decided to come surprise him. But I was going to surprise him with something I know that was going to be meaningful to our relationship. So I came fully dressed up as an astronaut. Up, So I pulled up front row the whole set I was like oh they know it's me they know it's me but like at no moment they kind of stop and there's a moment in the show that I know was coming up that was just like you know they point someone out in the crowd like oh this is gonna be the moment that Sean's gonna be like yo you've been going off and that moment came and he didn't pick me and I was like he was so funny he said he was really about her because he felt like he should have been him they got picked out but this girl like five over to him was way, way harder than him the entire time so I had to give it to her Flash, I kind of didn't really believe that that was Dreams because he had the helmet on and I knew it was the same outfit, but I was like, no he way. He supposed to be there. Yeah, no way is he there. So I waited till the very end to pop the helmet off and they were geeking out and I was geeking out. There was a really special moment. It was like one I'll never forget. I didn't know he was gonna be here, man. And a lot of the show was just kind of easy there because we had him, then we had Matt as well. And Matt was kind of like fine tuning and chopping everything to be a dream, just kind of creating a lot yeah, of the Matt, inputs Matt's, to that. Matt's eye for show visuals mixed with dreams is like creative eye. It's what made it look like it did. So working with Matt's been awesome. I've never had someone to bounce back and forth with. I created a big chunk of all these visual assets and Matt really did his thing and kind of chopped it and syncopated to the whole set. 
There are also some visual aspects of the show that I got to design Vexed Elephant, the evil elephant. I just had that vision every time I heard that drop and I was like, we have to have an evil elephant. I also was able to contribute the Strider jellyfish drop. We had these amazing visuals of a hand grabbing at a jellyfish that was kind of flying, but the drop, I just couldn't find the right clip for it. So I just made this loop with the, the camera flying through a field of jellyfish. One of the final iterations that we added were these energy bars during the encore that I could manually tug around and it would fill the energy bars. So as they kind of scream louder, it would just like get more full. And then once they peaked it, we'd come back and rip like two or so. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 So today we have an exclusive donut tasting experience. We have Ishan from Memba and we have Fabian from Fabian. Don't forget those. And uh, we are completely sanitized. Tradition. My Danish brother. Yes. Please. <laughs> let's dig go. into this box with me, bro. Yes, let's please. get it. Oh my God. Oh, I got this dirty got raspberry yeah. boy. Mm, oh my God. That's yeah. it. It's Danish no, like Oh my God. What is this? What is this? <laughs> I met Member in 2018, I think it was, when I was playing a show at ADE which is Amsterdam dance event. Yeah, we went to his set and it was just round. Like he was just so up our alley, like and he's just nice on the decks, you know? So we had a great time and I always remembered it. So I gave him a call. I was just like, hey man, like it's a crime you haven't played in America. Like you need to come out here, bro. I was like, you want to do 16 shows with us? My first thought when I got the call initially was, let's go. I was so hyped. I've been looking to come play in America for so long. And this was finally like my entry point, my way in. My set is bouncy, it's hip hoppy, it's electronic, it's rappy, it's high energy. I would just say dutsy, dude. Dutsy. Yeah. What, what, what does this intro say? Uh, uh, the king of champion and oh yeah, heavyweight, heavyweight wow. chest to bounce, dude. Yeah, that's a boy. Heavyweight champion. I think the thing I'm gonna miss most about being on tour is the energy that you feed off for people. After every single show, we always go meet people. And it's one of my favorite parts because people like really care. It's the best thing when we meet people after the show and they have little gifts for us that are like little Easter egg to like little artifacts from things we've done in our world. We got a painting that has like so much depth and layering of all the different words we've done in our language and designs from different eras in the project and then um some people did some metal work and made us these like amazing metal like fees and like member chain things well we had two three people with tattoos which is like insane <laughs> i don't even know like that's such an honor like the highest honor and i told some of like they got tickets for life you know like message me i'm serious about it. it's not courage but it's a do <laughs> we got you and then there's one person in sf they um had a huge candy and then his girlfriend had her face painted and was like full like member everything so yeah it was pretty amazing this tour was probably the best month of that in my life it took a lot of time to get to this point our whole goal with our live show is to shake it up and do something different you know have something on stage that's visually new and like mixing elements of performance art and theater into electronic music that hasn't really been done before put some masala on top of that stuff and i'm really really full like in my heart from meeting everyone after the shows the look in their eyes and the seeing some lyrics like all right with me or stand off and i can tell like it means something to them you know and like that's all i've ever wanted in my life and like seeing people break indian flags out like all these things that I will never forget in my life. Like it literally was so, so special. And for the future, I'm gassed because finally I know it wasn't too weird. It wasn't too whatever, all my concerns, it wasn't that. Like we're doing it and it's shaping up proper. And um, we have so many ideas that we haven't been able to do because of budget and stage size. So I just can't wait for you guys to see like what this becomes because right now it's just like day one.